welcome everyone to the launch of Generative Citizen. As Leela Watson, the Indigenous Australian activist said, if you've come here to help me, you're wasting your time. But if, you, if you've come here because of your liberation, because your liberation is bound up with mine, then let us work together. Generative Citizen is a global network of psychologically empowered and skillful people making the world a better place. We're advocates for social and environmental justice. The world is joined up. We all depend on each other. The essential training for the movement is Generative Citizen Level 1 designed by Judith Lowe. We want people to train this around the world in their own languages. So if you're an experienced trainer and are interested, do contact us. The first programme starts on Wednesday, the 2nd of November, 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Uh, London time with weekly classes for seven weeks. I'm so happy to welcome you, Judith. We've worked together since the 1980s. And I don't know if Judith would like me to tell you this or not, but she's been training people around the world for at least 40 years and teaches at NLPU with Robert Diltz and Judith Delosia. Welcome, Judith. It's so great to uh, be here with you today. Thank you for sponsoring this program and uh, for supporting uh, this idea of the generative citizen which was an idea that I think that we had when we were actually out to dinner with Robert Diltz and Stephen Gilligan one evening with the idea of using some of the amazing tools from the generative change movement and from NLP and all the other things that we have um, learnt ourselves and trained and taught to other people and use in our coaching and in all of our own personal development that we sort of pack we could package some of these key tools and offer them to people in quite a kind of simple straightforward way to help build their skill set for uh i suppose the big picture you know helping to make the world a better place but also in just a very everyday day-to-day -day way being part of the community that you're in, in a, in a skillful, grounded, um, you know, engaged kind of way. And so um, I started putting these kind of what are like five practices together so that uh, they would be very accessible really to everybody. And I was particularly inspired by looking at um, uh, a social activist movement who was saying, what people really need are personal development skills. <laughs> I was also inspired over COVID as well by thinking when we first, everything got shut down and things like that, especially in the UK, what can I offer people? You know, this is our time. Those of us that have been working with training, with coaching, with self-development type skills actually have something to give people at these moments. And as we see the world kind of especially things like climate change and the economy and wars and you know massive global injustices everywhere we look um yeah i want to be able to offer some really quite simple but very powerful package of tools and skills to support everybody whatever it is you want to do whether you want to be an activist or whether you don't want to be an activist it's really about your everyday self moving step by step, you know, into all our futures in a very skillful and kind of tender and um, open, optimistic, confident way. And um, so I'd like to share my slides with you. What I've got this evening, if you're a bit zoomed out today, I've got about, I have got some slides, but what I want to do as well is do some actual practical activities so that you get like a little bit of a taster of uh, what these what these skill sets might be. Um, so here we go. So this is the lovely generative citizen uh, visual that Julian has supplied, which I really love because unlike the ones we normally see in the UK, this literally has Africa as the center of it. And I, I really love that shift again in, uh, the perspective of maps 
that we see in the West. You know, this isn't the one we normally see. So I really like that. So here we go, five core practices for skillful living in challenging times. Um, a lot of the tools are from generative change and the generative coaching movement developed by Robert Diltz and Stephen Gilligan. And I can obviously say more about that if you want, if you have questions about it at the end. And again, many thanks to Julian. Um, in my work for the last, I suppose, about 20 years, it's been very much our, our proposal to use what we know for what I'm calling leadership in the community. So we're using these things for social change, social justice, you know, general well-being of people in the planet, uh, all, all the things I hope that you're more or less signed up to. We all want to contribute positively to a peaceful world and to sustainability in our world. We want to be open and, and help ourselves stay open to the opportunities and the potential for actual creativity to make new things happen in the world and to engage productively and effectively with what's going on in the world. And as I say, we want to develop our own habits and responses in everyday public and private spaces towards being more empathetic and uh, having more positive connection to ourselves and to the natural world, to other people, to all living things. So um, this is, as I say, the program, a little bit of the overview, introduction to the five core practices and then I'd like to take you through a sample of some of the activities, then there'll be some time for some questions. Um, so here are the five practices as I've seen to bundle, bundle something together under this kind of uh, uh, goal and vision, if you like, for this movement. Uh, the first one is about self-management. It's always going to start with ourselves and this self-regulatory, uh, you know, ongoing skillful self-development that we need to do to be at our best and to bring out the best in other people. And it's, it's a lifelong project, I think, for all of us uh, to be able to be more skillful at managing our own emotions, uh, managing our own moods and states, because the way that we feel literally underlies how we're going to see the world, all the choices we're going to perceive as possible, and all the kind of actions that we'll take. So it's an absolutely fundamental aspect, I think, of really being able to make your unique gifted contribution to the way we all live and to, you know, make, making the world a better place, you know, making it a nice world for all of us. Um, how we feel moment to moment is of supreme importance. And there's a whole skill set about that. And I'm going to say a little bit about that. Then self-development, again, in this kind of generative citizen, the idea would be, again, a kind of ongoing lifelong self-development, healing things from the past, being able to sort of expand our sense of who we are and what we can do, expanding our capacity to act wisely and with compassion. It's just a, an ongoing project, personally, professionally, in all our relationships, um, in every way. And so there's lots and lots and lots of models and processes and techniques and activities that are going to support that to kind of flow alongside of this idea of self-management and self-regulation. Then I think the third thing in my package is empathy and compassion, uh, this ability to understand other people, step into their shoes, see the world from their point of view, really feel for our, have that kind of fellow feeling for other people on the planet and be able to act, you know, from a lot of that feeling. To, to see other people as us, not them, you know, as we, not other, uh, I think, again, is a huge skill which, which, which we can enhance and enrich and develop over time. 
Then communication, those of you that know NLP will know it classically is about, you know, excellent communication. Uh, we have a lot of models and a lot of know-how in the, particularly in the NLP field, but as well as that in the generative change field about what communication is and how to, again, kind of finesse and upgrade, update, you know, how we can communicate well, especially, and I'll come to this, when, when we're in these closed bubbles of beliefs and attitudes with other people that we share our planet with, you know, how are we going to connect to each other? How are we going to um, understand and appreciate each other? Uh, and then the fifth one is what I've called the citizen's knowledge base. And uh, I'll, when we come to that, I'll explain more about what that is. So the first one is this kind of self-management idea. Um, there are lots of different ways to be able to do this uh, in generative change um, field. We've got this very good model, which I will show you, the coach and crash model, which really, really gives you um, a framework to become more and more self-aware, to be able to calibrate your own state, to be able to make sort of requisite tweaks and adjustments to how you're feeling and how you're being and what sort of energy you're bringing into your life moment to moment. Then I want to add to that some somatic practices, which you know would be releasing tension and grounding, these kind of ongoing lifelong practices. So this is the coach crash model. I know that a lot of you already know this, this idea of being mindful or mindless, you know, off on our routine habitual kind of programs. So you can see coach and crash are these acronyms, uh, centered, open, aware, connected, holding, and contracted, reactive, analysis, paralysis, separated from ourselves and others, you know, hurting, um, you know, hating, violent, in fact. Um, so this is, this is kind of, I think, such an incredibly useful model to be able to become more self-aware, more reflective on our own practices and our own behaviors, and to have the skill to be able to move ourselves when we go into more of a kind of crash state, we tighten up, we become a bit more triggered, a bit more up in our heads, a bit more alienated from other people and from ourselves, and a bit more kind of angry or fearful or, you know, aggravated that we can find our way home to a very centered, breathing, grounded kind of state again and again through the day. And um, so I think it's a wonderful model, this idea of the inner game, the inner game of everyday life, if you like, centered in your body, open in mind and in heart, kind of aware and awake and present to yourself and to other people around you, able to connect to your own kind of capabilities and resources and to be able to see and sense and identify resources around you in people and to be able to be present with and welcoming and hospitable with a sense of curiosity and resourcefulness really to whatever is happening, whatever is happening in the present moment you can you can welcome because it's it is the truth of what's happening right now so it's a very very particular very highly skilled state and of course it's partly called coach state because it's also super helpful for coaches and therapists and consultants but actually it's super helpful if you're a parent or a child or a sibling or a partner or a neighbor or a team member to be able to find yourself and come home to yourself again and again, relaxed and ready for whatever's happening. And these are some of the ways that we can do that. We can slow down, 
because we have such a lot of noise in our environment, we can slow down and just kind of pause and breathe and center. And so here, this is this idea of welcoming problems, welcoming symptoms, realizing that there's a lot of rich information and a potential actually locked inside of a lot of symptoms and difficulties. So this idea that comes from Erickson, Milton Erickson's uh, uh, hypnotherapy practice where a symptom comes up, it's not a problem. It's interesting, you're curious. You know somehow it makes sense, you know, it fits with what's happening and something needs to be heard or held or healed. It's a big welcome. So this of course is then the opposite of that, the crash state, which I think some people will know more as this kind of survival strategies when we're sort of triggered and we're just on fight, flight, freeze, fold mode. We're not really at choice with ourselves. We're not sensing our own resources. We're just acting out of pure reactivity. Um, and uh, as I'm sure, you know, you know, you know, we've got these programs that are wired into us for meeting saber toothed tigers in the world. But in fact, we're running these programs when we've missed our bus or, you know, when all kinds of just everyday things have happened. And so this is sort of this immense over adrenalization and over activation of the nervous system. And uh, we're not then at our best and we're not bringing out the best in a situation. So, so this, again, we're looking at breathing, sitting maybe in a more aligned way, aware of your body. This is one of uh, Robert Diltz's phrases and I really love it. And I worked quite recently with a client just, and we just said these words, you know, relaxed readiness. It appears to be opposites, you know, relaxed, and ready you're ready and relaxed it's a beautiful kind of paradox that you can hold in your system in your body and then focus spaciousness in your mind that there's a sense of space and quiet where you can think but there's also your ability to focus and move your attention around wherever you want it to be so this is this uh uh, how you can calibrate, you know, where am I at any given moment in my everyday life, just hour to hour, moment to moment, walking into the shops, crossing the road, you know, um, as I say, like on the, on the bus, going to my team meeting, um, going to an appointment for something, meeting up with friends, where am I, you know, what, what is my state? And if we're looking at roughly seven, where you're starting to be really much more at choice, sense of agency, resourcefulness, calmness, ability to be kind and understanding, ability to be communicative in whatever way you want to. It's very, very interesting uh, scale, I think. So I like to add to that, working through what's called somatic intelligence, working through the body, working with and through the body. And, uh, and this idea of bringing awareness to your own movement and your own patterns of movement so that you can establish this kind of sense of positive learning in your body. My own practice with this is through something called the Alexander Technique, which some of you will have heard of and some of you won't, but it's a, it's a practice, an ongoing practice, which makes you very aware of your own habits and reactions in the moment. And it, and it, and it you know, the request is that you stop and pause very much like the coach state. And that uh, there's this idea that, um, so this is much more linked, this idea of fake news to something we'll come along in a moment to, this kind of confirmation bias, that when you're tense, you're only seeing what you're projecting and what you've always seen, even if it's kind of faulty. I can kind of say more about that. So here's where we're 
focusing in the Alexander technique and sense of being aligned and poised. There's a beautiful person aligned and poised <laughs> and with tremendous somatic intelligence. And there's another one, two of the world's greatest athletes, just absolutely kind of in the most ultimate performance state, completely at one with themselves and with the most beautiful, graceful, relaxed and yet um, directed skillful movement. So the second practice is what I've called self-development. And that is really this idea, I'm not gonna read all the slides, but it's like of evolving the self, you know, uh, really working with your inner world. This is more of this idea of this kind of developmental NLP, as I would call it, you know, I've done a lot of um, coaching and masterclasses and things like that in the last however many years on coaching at identity level. You know, what's special about coaching at identity level, a sense of who you are and how you want to evolve yourself um, and your gifts and talents through life. So I think it would be good and interesting to deal with this idea of the shadow, the self and the shadow. Um, we can look at this idea of archetypal energies as well. I think that comes into it. This is the logical levels model that we'll be working with. Again, I think a lot of you will know this, but you can just see there is, you know, there's different things going on for us at different levels. We've got a level of environment, the where or the when, and behavior is always contextual. Behavior takes place in an environment. It's what you do, what you say, your actions, and those are organized at a kind of another level a less conscious level of your kind of capabilities. And then there's obviously beliefs and values, like why you do things, what the rules are in your model of the world about yourself and how the world is and what's possible and what you're capable of and what you deserve. These are kind of these rules and beliefs that you're guiding your capabilities you know, into behavior to kind of touch the world uh, through you. And then here is really this idea of identity, that you are more than your beliefs, you're more than just your capabilities, you're more than your behaviors, you're more than any environment you might be. So you've got this sense of kind of mission and, uh, and role. And so again, I'm just sort of a little bit speeding on, but I really love this list from Robert, which is about identity development, you know, that you're clarifying your life's direction. You've got the kind of managing boundaries, your sense of self where you end and others begin, how you can say your yeses and your noes, who you are, that you are not them, <laughs> you're not like others. Uh, becoming clear about beliefs that support who we are, transforming beliefs that don't, expanding our sense of self, this idea of incorporating new dimensions of being and becoming more present and alive in who we are. And um, I've just got like a couple of, this is actually the artist and, and she's actually got a show on in London. I can hardly believe it. I found this art yesterday and in fact the show opened yesterday. This uh, wonderful um, artist who did the beautiful portrait of Michelle Obama. Those of you that know that portrait, it's called Picture. She's Amy Sherald, Pictures of American Life. And I just love these in terms of identity, like really being able to kind of see who a person is and sponsor them, see them, censor them, sense them, see, see the wholeness of them. And so there's just a couple of her paintings. I really like, love them. Very, very beautiful, very present, real people. You can see them. So the third <laughs> practice is this ongoing practice of empathy, appreciation, tenderness, compassion, understanding. Um, and it kind of follows from, you know, if we're in a reasonably good coach state and we're developing ourselves, 
we're much more able to feel for and with other people and to see the world from their point of view, see other people's needs, feel with our hearts and for other people's predicaments and kind of want to want to do what we can, you know, to help or support people, at least to see them and to understand them. So, um, so this is about developing compassion and uh, using some NLP tools, but also I think it will be fun on the program to use things from arts. I have an arts background ultimately and a drama background, improv. Maybe we can, you know, work with more through our imaginations, through literature, dance, painting, movies, music. Uh, maybe there's some practices as well that we can uh, that we can do. And so here's a classic NLP um, model of the perceptual positions. I just stole this actually from. Judy Delosia, I couldn't find one. We've just used this on our modeling program where first position is me, second position is stepping into the shoes of someone else. And then third position is being able to be more in this observer type position, being able to see how I'm interacting with someone else, to see my own patterns, what I'm triggering, what I'm creating positively in my communication patterns. Um, and again, I've got just a, a beautiful piece of art here by an indigenous Australian painter. Um, and I just love this painting. There's so many from this particular cohort of women artists in Australia. I mean, imagine, imagine being a person who created this painting how what would your world be like if this was your vision and i think that we can really look around the whole world and kind of take in how other people are seeing the world and, and living in their world and then this was sort of little silly thing in this so this was on twitter actually and it goes, me, what are you drawing? Five-year-old, oh, just a picture about how I feel. Oh, I love that. Can I see? And this is the picture. <laughs> it's just feelings, how to, how to find out what other people are feeling. Sometimes you need to draw it, but you do need to ask as well, be willing to see it. Great picture. And then this kind of art, you know, empathy, this beautiful uh, Mexican artist, Elena Chauvet, which I think some of you may have seen this installation, The Red Shoes, which was put at this huge public installation uh, of uh, women and girls, you know, who've been uh, murdered, lost to violence. So here's our fourth one, communication. This is uh, also a, a big thing. And to have really, really good communication skills, to know your way around language, to be able to say the right thing in the right way at the right time, all of this becomes more and more important, I think, in our world where we're becoming so divided and so, um, I mean, I'm a big Twitter fan, but I mean, I find it, quite difficult sometimes, just the, what's called the pylons, you know, the sort of um, people are finding it easier and easier to be super unpleasant to each other. Um, so we've got, particularly from NLP, some actual really powerful communication principles that come down to us through sort of cybernetics and through lots of research in the 20th century about how people are kind of you know, have their own different kind of model of the world. In fact, now we think of it more as a kind of confirmation bias projected, endless projections that we're creating our worlds all the time. Um, the NLP model is very much that um, 
we're hoping what we say lands with someone in the way that we meant it. But because we're all running these different kind of simulated realities, it's not always a done deal. You know, language is very uh, ambiguous. There are cultural differences, which mean that gestures and the way that you do things can be misinterpreted and misunderstood, no matter your intentions. So there's a lot of kind of principles that we're working with in NLP, you're always communicating, you know, you're, you need flexibility in how you communicate. Um, and then to add in, you know, we've got like a lot of models, tried and tested amazing kind of models. This main, this list may not mean very much to you if you're not, and believe me, you don't have to be an NLP person at all, because these are models which you can find the crossover in things like cognitive behavior therapy, where you're challenging people's sentences and you're challenging their beliefs and you're understanding how language has sometimes rigidified people's worldview. And we're listening to how language can work to really kind of free us out into finding out what's possible, you know, finding out what's possible to do, finding out how to make other people feel good and feel like they belong and they're worthwhile and that we're willing to, to engage with them. Um, so this is just a long list of jargon for people who don't know it. Um, and that's absolutely fine. I can give obviously examples of all of that. Sight of mouth is more this way of kind of framing using language. Meta programs are like these filters where maybe someone is more thinking about goals and someone else might be more thinking about problems and that shows up in their language. It's like a, two different cultures, if you like. Uh, metaphors, how we use metaphors, sensory based language, you know, seeing, hearing, feeling. So this really is my graphic for this. And it's, it, and it's a strong graphic, I think, for why uh, I'm, um, you know, in a way inspired to, to produce this program for anyone who wants to join me. Not, as I say, that I'm trying to sort of make people into activists or anything really, just more skillful human beings in the world is really what I'm after. But this is the sort of bubbles of people watching and reading different kinds of news at the American election before last. And you can see they're almost non-overlapping. This is, this is going to be more and more our problem, this non-overlapping realities that we're living with and how to build bridges, how to use language and how to communicate across this. So again, we've got, it's called epistemic closure when you're just in your own bubble and you can't even take on board uh, disconfirming evidence, you know, new kinds of evidence that prove that you, you know, that you could doubt something that you're really sure is true. So this idea of principled persuasion, not, you know, which has values to it about caring for people, uh, understanding something about cognitive bias, understanding something about nonviolent discussion. I think all of these are really going to be important for all of us to be as skillful as we can. So this is an example. So there's something called proper naming, how we use words, how we use our words. And this comes from Stephen Gilligan, which like, how can we say something? <laughs> that what he says, it tells the truth of a situation and it brings out the best in people. And it kind of assumes that and triggers sort of people to feel very resourceful and capable and good about themselves and good about what they can make happen. And it honors the values in the system. Um, so th that would be again, like a kind of exercise we might do. And then finally, there's this idea of a citizen, what I've called a kind of citizen's knowledge base. And uh, so the first four practices are all literally kind of, you know, tools and skills that 
day by day, week by week, year by year, over the course of our lives, we can develop to make us a more resourceful, capable, engaged person in the world. And that means then you, you have the option then to use that however you want, whatever you might want to get involved with or support, you're going to be able to do that with wisdom and compassion and skill and, and tenderness for yourself and others. Um, the citizen's knowledge base is much more what I've thought of. Um, I mean, I've thought that it could work almost like a kind of book club, if you like, that there's kind of background um, data, evidence-led data that is historical, that is economic, that is just kind of um, proven to be the case, as it were. So this is what I've thought of it, that it's a kind of reality, evidence-based, social, historical facts and evidence, maybe on race, or colonialism, sex, patriarchy, class, poverty, inequality, climate crisis, mainly those four areas, I think. And I'd like to do it in a very neutral way <laughs> so that it's, it's very non-ideological, it's non-confrontational. Everyone can just kind of relax around learning some things, maybe about your own country's history, you know, in, a, in some new ways. So, for example, I'm currently listening to a wonderful podcast called Empire, which has Anita Anand and William Dalrymple talking about the ones I've heard so far. Uh, the East India Company, uh, the Kohinoor Diamond, of course, which came up, uh, you know, on the Queen's Crown and all the various kind of history of that. Um, it's so, so interesting. It's just sort of, I didn't know a lot of these things. You know, we weren't taught a lot of this stuff at school and, um, or, you know, at university or whatever. I've sort of acquired a lot of knowledge over my lifetime, but I think it's an interesting one to know about. And so I've got, although I'm sick, you know, I think these things are interesting. You know, this was the, <laughs> this was the removal of the statue of Edward Colson, and you may or may not agree with it. I, 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 I feel fine about that. It's interesting who he was though, you know, and, and why people were doing this. Um, for those of you who aren't in the UK, uh, Edward Colston was um, uh, someone who enslaved people and built wealth in the UK and Bristol through doing that. And the local population had been asking for this statue to be taken down literally for about, I don't know, decades, about 20, 30 years. And in the end, this was part of the sort of Black Lives Matter movement. They just kind of very gently pulled him off the pedestal, rolled him into the harbor. And um, I think that's a really interesting thing to do. You know, why not? Living history, isn't it? I mean. That is what happens to statues, but it's interesting to ask why. So, and I really like this, you know, somebody who was there, an artist who was there, a sculptor, made a sculpture of this woman whose name I have, I'm afraid, forgotten and uh, put her statue, replaced, <laughs> you know, the statue with a, a great statue of her. And uh, I think these are the kinds of things that are very, very interesting. They're very alive in our times right now. And we can have infill some of the historical um, background to this. So I've had the idea to, um, you know, here's some basic resources. These are UK. The first ones are very UK based. And so what I want is for people in other countries, in other cultures to have a chance if you want to start teaching this material to be able to start selecting your own materials. Here we've got this wonderful historian called David Olusoga, who's done an, some amazing BBC television series as well about um, uh, the black presence and black history in the UK. Then uh, here's one by a woman called Caroline Criado Perez. Uh, which is about the data sets <laughs> that relate to uh, data bias in a world designed for men. Then the, here's one by this guy, Guy Shrubsole, who owns England. So this is much more about things like land ownership. And then I've got some others, you know, maybe 
take some readings from Greta Thunberg or uh, Rolf Dobelli, which is about um, cognitive bias. Uh, these are some American writers and, and um, scholars, Claudia Rankin, which is about race, Jamil Zaki, the war for kindness, building empathy in a fractured world. George Lakoff, again, that would be about sort of how we think and how we put our world together. There's so much material, reading, podcasts, movies, TV, you know, poems. And I would think of this as being a kind of, a, a, like a peer study group that is just with the other practices, coach state, self-development, good communication, empathy, we can start to kind of make ourselves that little bit more knowledgeable in a non-confrontational, non-ideological way, such that we've got that kind of relaxed readiness, you know, where when these kind of things come up, we've got some choices about how we might engage when those opportunities come up about maybe communicating something differently or framing something differently for somebody. Um, so this is what I want to do today. Just some little exercises from each of these five, well, four of the five uh, processes and to say, so I'll bring this out maybe at the end, but you know, we've got some prices for the program, different uh, donation levels, and we'll kind of come back to that. What I want to do is go backwards to this, okay. Sorry if that was a lot of slides for people. I hope you're not all zoomed out already. Um, I wonder quite like if there's anybody got some comments or questions, let's have like five minutes or so. And then I'd really like to do like two or three little mini examples of the practical skill acquisition that we'll be able to do on the program in these different areas. If you have a question, um, just click on the reaction button and then we'll we'll you know we'll take your question so there's the reaction buttons at the bottom of the screen uh, oh your... robert is here i didn't realize that yeah yeah sorry i got in hi robert That's having a little to see you. Hi. Hi. <laughs> hi robert <laughs> having a little challenge with my internet though <laughs> it already knocked me off once or twice <laughs> it's great. no it's great great so so I'm wondering if anybody had any anything they wanted to add. I'm really happy to, uh, well, I want to, I really actively want to <laughs> kind of engage with everybody who's who'd like to ask anything or comment at this point. Whoever put, put the question in chat, why don't you um, just- Oh, there's someone here, GRC. Them. Yeah. Hi there. Hey. Hi, um, Tivo. How are you today? Yeah, um, lovely to see you. You know, I think in a, in another space, I, I see a similar trend where there was um, somatic coaching more on the individual and corporate level, and mm -hmm. then there was the expansion to generative coaching. I mean, uh, generative somatics, which was social yeah. change and yeah. embodiment practices. So I see a parallel here. That's right. I'm curious. I'm curious what the jump is from like a generative coaching lens to a generative citizen lens. What is that? Because I see some other yeah. dimensions. And well, they so are, curious. of course. I have stolen everything I know from Robert Diltz. He will, <laughs> <laughs> he can confirm this. <laughs> Glad we give done, it. <laughs> what I've done, because it's not a certificated program as such. It, I've packaged together what I think would be, um, so in other words, the, the, it's different missions, different visions shared, of course, at the, at, the, at the highest level, the shared, completely shared values. But this is like a package of, you know, some skills that we can all just use for every day, every day, being in the world at our best, you know, bringing out what we can in others and, you know, being part of promoting more loving kindness, more creativity, more inclusion, you know, more resilience, 
you know, in, in our world so that we can solve the problems that we have. So it's not a specific sort of profession. It's not a profession. Yeah. Yeah, it's no, I just wanted to biggest. hear. Yes. I wanted to hear more the that what you just articulated, that yeah. context and that difference, because I think it's what the world doctor just ordered, right? I mean, yeah. I think these technologies <laughs> were at I'm the hoping. community level and social change level yeah. are perfect. So thank you. That's right. That's right. And that's what I'm hearing in the sort of social change activist world that actually what's needed is this kind of grounding. And these are really superb. I mean, they're superb, you know, world-class tools. They really- Totally agree. The, Thank you. They are the thing. And I'm not just saying that because, you know, Robert Diltz is here. I would say <laughs> behind his back. <laughs> Oh, and question from John Sleeper. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, John. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. Hi. Hi, Judith. Nice Hi, to see you again. Yeah. Um, your... to... Oh, hello. <laughs> yes. <laughs> your, your passion is really infectious. And thanks for the presentation. It's, um, you know, how could, how could you not be sort of drawn into this idea that, you know, we're trying to bring this work to, to the world in, yeah. You know, particularly some of the things that are happening with climate change and things like that. So, so yeah, yeah really, really like to 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 hear and see your ideas. I had a really specific question. I'm afraid. Yeah, go for it. About the um the slide. I really liked the slide you showed with the impact of the media. Yeah. Um, and it, I think I, I, this, the, there was the question I asked in the chat. Um, because there were, I think, sort of three main colours, red, blues, and green. So I was just curious what the colours represented. Uh, the colours represented really sort of Republicans and Democrats. So it was the, okay. it was just a, it was um, a visual mapping of, okay. the, of what's called the epistemic closure, <laughs> you know, of people who were reading and watching different media. So you right. could see like where the, the the two different kind of voting main voting uh, bodies but, just were so, never overlapping, and yeah, I think yeah. it's I, I, the similar uh, data from Facebook, you know, about yeah. just people living. We're all living, you know. When I say yeah. people, I mean me. You know, I am living in a bubble of people who kind of think how I do. Well, mainly yeah. apart from my, you know, my conservative relatives. Yes. We sort of all living in our echo chambers. Yeah, absolutely. That's right. That's right. And so what we want to be able to do is to be skillful, confident, loving enough to be able to take a step, you know, towards others and kind of find out, as, as Ericsson would say, you know, find out what's possible. You know, I don't really know. I don't really know what's possible. I just know from my own experience for working with these things myself. And I am by no means a living saint, I can tell you that. But I am kind of like, you know, I am on that path. I'm on that path with a lot of other people. Um, I don't know what's possible. We know, we know there's such a lot of potential, even in this crisis, where so much is so difficult and it's scary. I think, especially for young people, I feel it's such a worry, you know, to see teenagers and young people yeah. being told you know the world is going to boil and all of these you know how are we going to help them I really want to help all of us find a way somehow to solve our problems in the most kind of creative ways that we can and I think this is a way this this is <laughs> one of the ways that we can do it anyway this is what I thought I could do that's what no, that's I, right. feel. Um, I feel completely... like what can I do I don't want to join anything you know I'm a hermit really uh, I can do this. <laughs> this is what I can do. I'm quite good at this. Any, yeah. other, any other questions um, or comments? Uh, John, Thanks, you were, John, you were wondering you, about the, the, nice. the green color, which I believe was independence. Would that be right? Oh, that's right. Sorry. Thanks, Robert. Coming yeah. back to that. Yes. So they're not, not on either side, but there was yeah. a small, only a small Sorry. amount of green. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, totally. Thank you. Most of us are like going, I can't believe you think that. Sure. <laughs> how, what, how are we going to solve that if we do, we've got to make a start somewhere? 
all of us got to take responsibility for it and little by little in our own little worlds you know see if we can move it hi george let's have this uh one. yes can and you just I'll, and then I'll do please uh, judith i wasn't quite sure uh in the five models that you're using five models yeah. uh whether this is going to be a linear progression or this is going to be a spiral or a ripple Ooh. effect or whether it's going to be uh, how how, the, how are the paradigms set up please? yeah all of those things simultaneously well the way that we can teach it mm -hmm. the way that i'm going to teach it is we're mm -hmm. going to do the so there are seven sessions right so basically the first session is going to be sort of laying out everything mm -hmm. i mean you're quite right because these are practices that we're going to do in parallel all right uh and so but i am going to take them one at a time to just mm -hmm. give people the opportunity to get some depth mm -hmm. of experience with mm -hmm. each of them mm -hmm. and then as we go through of course then we'll be kind of layering you know, layering things in. So mm -hmm. by the time we get to communication, we'll know how to communicate effectively and well and compassionately from a kind of coach state and with empathy and from mm -hmm. a place of healing and development in ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so each one will kind of, you know, be the found foundational for the others. They work all, you know, they weave and work together and I would hope the same for the background kind of, um, you know, citizens knowledge base or whatever. I mean, I may not always call it that. That's a sort of mm -hmm. title that I'm giving it at the moment. So that by the time we come to that and we're reading about maybe our history or we're reading about, you know, I don't know, there's lots of things we can we can look at there. We've, we've, we're coming to that very skillfully. And then at the end, the last session, so there's one opening session, then the five practices sessions, and then there's one at the end just for people to kind of really bring all of those together in the way that they want to and in mm. the way that works for them and to develop a kind of pathway forward for them in, in whatever way people want. I mean, it could be... It just, it is supposed to be an everyday thing, but mm. where you feel you're part of something, we're already, you're aware rather that you're part of, we're all, we are already citizens, you know, mm. it's like how to be a generative citizen is mm. to be able to bring that kind of spirit mm -hmm. of grounded, you know, creative, compassionate, skillful connection um, into the world with us every day. So. I was Judith, I was thinking about there being three sort of levels. One was be the change I want in the world is the mm -hmm. first level. Second level is advocate, so talking about it, mm -hmm. sharing it, um, communicating it. And then the third level, which some people may not want to do as a part of the movement, but it's there, which is to be an activist, to get involved mm -hmm. in some way. So, but all of those three levels are possible within um, the generative um, mm -hmm. citizen movement. That's right. I think but awesome. I think of it as much as sort of being nice to the people in the shops, you know, yeah. Yeah. and uh, kind of like creating that field, you right. know, a kind of positive field around you everywhere you go, yeah. that you're yeah. able to do that in a nice way. Mm -hmm. I see how much difference it makes right. when you can be like that with people. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure all of us are already like that, but it would, you know, you can be more like it if you see what I mean. You can have that choice available to you more frequently and with more, you know, kind of range, I think. Yeah. Um, and that makes a huge difference to other people's yeah. sense of safety and belonging and well being. That makes a difference to other people's health and their stress levels and their ability to connect to themselves and to other people with good heart and good humor and fellow feeling. And, you know, that, that's how you create community and a feeling of, as I say, kind of like fundamental safety. Peta Sissons um, has a question that she's put in the chat, a very practical question about signing up for the programme. Will it be possible to miss a live session and watch the recording of it? 
Yeah, that's that's you, Julian. I think. I think <laughs> well, I thought you might have a comment, but all oh, right. So, well, I would we, say hopefully we, yes. <laughs> we will record it. Yeah, um, and that should be available to everybody. I think it'll to everybody who signed up for the program. Yeah. So yeah, we'll send you the link afterward. Yeah. Um, but we'd really prefer it if you are um, present because of the exercises, because of the interaction, because of all of that. So it's you know it's a you'll get the data, you'll get the information if you if you watch the video. But really, we'd prefer you to be face to face, um, connecting, because a part of this is about creating a community mm -hmm. where you know where we we have a peer group where there's mutual support, um, where um, our peer group is helping us think about um, how we want to, to live, um, who are supporting us in our feelings about social justice and environmental justice. That part of the programme is super important as well. Robert, as you're here, do you want to sort of say anything? Well, I, sure, but I think that Kate, <laughs> has a, has a, Kate has a question or comment first. Okay, Kate. Thank Bye, you. Kate. Hi, thank you. Um, uh, a lot of this is sounding really familiar to me, although I've not really worked with NLP. What I've been working with is something called regenerative thought, re regenerative, regenerative thinking. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm hearing a lot about re being really nice to people. Yeah. And um, one of the... <laughs> uh, yeah. Being kind and being yeah. thoughtful and empathetic. And yeah. one, one of the things about um, regenerative practice oh. regenerative thinking is uh frameworks it work to explain people to people to help with their cognitive development mm -hmm. and i mean it's it's very similar to what you're saying in that it's about um helping giving people skills in how to think so that they can make more of a contribution in the world yeah and Great. I, if you don't know about it i'd highly recommend you yeah no it sounds it. wonderful so um, i think there's a lot of people doing the same yeah. you know it it's a field energy mm. i think this is just one you know there are multiple ways of being on this same path i think this is just yeah. one i'm i'm proposing yeah, yeah. yeah. so so one of what, what i was wondering about is um yeah. it, there's a framework which is called the six levels of energy oh sounds nice yeah so the the there's the vital automatic and sensitive levels yeah which is, you know, the vital is where we're worrying about what we're going to eat and who's, you know, doing what to whom. The automatic is where we kind of socialize and it's how we function socially. Wow, yeah. The sensitive is where we um, become more empath empathic, yeah. are aware of other people. And, and, and then there's a kind of glass ceiling through which a lot of people don't break. A lot of people stay in those lower three -year levels of energy. Mm -hmm. When you move up to the next level, which is the conscious level, then you start to really have more possibility of understanding what's going on in the world. And just like mm -hmm. you're describing, then there's the creative level where mm -hmm. you start to be able to really make a difference. And the the last level is in that this framework is the, the unitive where you become part of the oneness wow. and your, your inspiration for what you do comes from the greater whole. Great. If you, the greatest hole. The greatest hole. <laughs> so what, one of the things that is a characteristic of yeah. the creative level is something that we call um, ruthless caring. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> I'm so yeah. wondering if that relates <laughs> and how, how it might. Absolutely. Well, so one of the things at the identity level, you know, is kind of also really knowing who you are and having boundaries for who you are and being able to communicate well. It's not, I mean, maybe I have overplayed <laughs> the kind of being nice and compassionate. <laughs> I do also really believe in being sort of, you know, people standing up for themselves, people speaking their truth, people having a kind of clear energy, but in a non-violent way. Um, so absolutely, I mean, one of the models uh, that, we'll be working with is a model called uh, archetypal energies and one of the energies is the energy of the warrior you know it's the energy yeah. of the warrior it's the energy yeah, yeah. of fierceness yes and um i have also been a woman self-defense teacher so i can <laughs> tell you that it's um, close to my heart that uh people need 
need that too but in a way that's um how can you do that from a kind of coach state that you can yeah. stand your ground stand up for yourself speak your truth yeah you know in a way that also brings out the best in others you know that's yeah. that's the interesting thing yeah can you can you communicate even from your fierce center in a way that is transformational in a situation and helps people feel included and creative, you and know, uplifted. resilient with you. Yes. Yeah. And, <laughs> so and I also, hope that just rebalances that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Thank you. That sounds really interesting. And I'm I'm obviously I'm so happy to feel I'm part of, you know, really multiple, multiple, multiple ways that that people are looking at how to skill up you know that's always been my thing you know when in doubt skill up i've always done that in my in my life uh, every point i've met something that i felt that i i didn't know what to do like yeah i'm going to really dig deeper uh, and uh, and have these and what i like about it is the idea as well that they're practices it's not a one off kind of oh now we've done that now we've learned that this is experiential learning. And so you can never get, you know, you'll never going to get to perfection. Well, you know, you might, maybe if you're Robert Diltz, you're perfect. I don't know. But um, <laughs> no. you want to come in at this point, Robert. <laughs> you so still have to tease Robert, just for people to know. I, I, I know, I know. I just was thinking that I remember uh, hearing the story uh, uh, about um, Carl Rogers when he was getting ready to do a demonstration with somebody and he suddenly paused and he said, you know, I, I realized that, you know, when I get started working with somebody, you know, there's a few things I go through. And, you know, one is that, you know, I, I, I realized that, you know, I can't be perfect and I don't want to be perfect for this person because that would not be good enough. Yeah, yeah <laughs> and that's a great... That what I can do yeah. is to be, you know, to... to be present with all of my humanity uh, and meet all of their humanity with that. And I think, uh, yeah, that's why perfection is, <laughs> is uh, definitely not something I aspire <laughs> to. Being human, yes. But no, I, and, and yeah, I, I think it's great that, um, first of all, yeah, that, thank you for taking NLP in this direction. And I know that it's, it's, there's a lot of other as you know, as um, you wife Deborah is involved in the mindfulness community, which is a lot of doing a lot with social justice and um, you know the radical compassion area, which I think is really fantastic, and just makes between uh, compassion, empathy, and sympathy is so important in this kind of work and kind of things that people are bringing up, and actually. Uh, Deborah's interpreting a, a big polyvagal theory um, you know, ah, conference nice. starting tomorrow, where there is a whole area of polyvagal theory in uh, social justice, which I think is so important. But I think what I would say, first of all, you know, just to acknowledge you, you are one of our main trainers at NLPU. Uh, so you've been doing this for so long. Uh, one of the things I was thinking as I was listening to you, having known you, I think it's getting close to 40 years now, yeah. is that this is what you were designed to do. <laughs> this is how your, your calling yeah. is. And I'm so glad that you are really em em embracing that. Um, so and I, I think that, um, yeah, this is something that is, is long overdue, you know, for NLP. You know, I have to say, my own path um when i got involved in nlp i wasn't studying psychology i was studying politics and how do you make you know big change and the reason that i got involved in nlp was because i realized that all these political theories were so abstract that it didn't really have anything to do with the actual human beings and so i got involved with nlp to actually try to understand what what would need to change inside of the individual in order for there to be that bigger change. So this is also what has been, you know, my dream and my path. So I just want to 
say I think it's it's fantastic, and I honor you, and and also you know Julian for taking also the reins with this. Uh, I think this is that's super exciting. Being bringing yeah. people from a lot of different yeah. fields, yeah. Um, but just starting with the generative community and the NLP community, and in fact, um, we could probably do more to bring. Um, the NLP community into the conversation, particularly since, you know, Judith is using so many of those tools in such a beautiful way. Um, so I think that's, it's really very, very exciting to start with the really skillful people and to skill ourselves up so that we can also, so what's so great with this program is Judith wants people to teach this in, in other languages and other places so that we'll be running a trainer track in parallel um, for people to teach um, generative citizen level one um, all over the world. I mean, that's, you know, let's make this big. Let's get as many people involved as possible. Let's use the skills that we already have, um, you know, to work together and feel supported by each other to take this out to, to more and more people. I mean, that's, that's the vision we have. Um, and we already have um, people who are beginning to get involved and, um, you know, in developing the movement in addition to just, not just, but in addition to the training program itself. Um, Judith. Lovely, thank you. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Julian. So I've just seen Iris actually. Hi, Iris. <laughs> you just popped up on my, at the bottom there. Nice to see you. So let's do like a few practical things and uh, have a taster for some of these models. Um, and I'd like to do something on this model, the coach, crash model uh, which I have personally found so absolutely fundamental I mean it's definitely was something that got me through the the Covid lockdowns <laughs> was just kind of having a, such a clear way of thinking about how to sort of be aware of what was going on inside of me and also to be able to make any kind of adjustments that I wanted to make so that, um, you know, I, I could still have a kind of full and good life, you know, <laughs> uh, with all of what was happening going on um, and could enjoy many aspects of that such, you know, I know it wasn't, you know, enjoyable for everybody and there was a lot of terrible tragedy, but but being able to still carry on living our lives and being ourselves, I think that was the coach crash model really gave me some terrific kind of filters and reference experiences for being able to work positively with my own state. So what we'll do, so the first thing about this, the first practice is this kind of self-management, self-regulation coach state. So if you want to just, whatever you've been doing today, feel that you can just huh, let it go a bit. I'll slow down. I'll drop my voice down a bit. I'll breathe a bit more so you can. <laughs> and just notice what's going on in your shoulders. Move them if you want to. Take a bit of a breath. However you need to relax your face, relax your eyes, just kind of stretch or move however you want to, because we've all been, one of the things about screen watching is that we all just sort of tighten up a little bit, often way below the threshold of conscious awareness. And let me just take you through these kind of five, pieces of the coach model this first idea of actually centering your body and if it helps you can move your hands down your midline but you can feel that you can just drop your sensibility into your kind of gut center if you like into the lower part of your body you can drop the way that you're feeling and become more aware of your legs, your belly center, your spine, just supporting you so that you can just drop down out of all the busyness in your head, 
that's been going on all day, just quieten down your nervous system so that you can be more in your body and particularly in the lower half of your body, feeling your feet on the ground, feeling your calves, feeling your knees, feeling your thighs, feeling where you contact the chair. Ah, just letting out a breath. Oh. And just noticing how that helps you to come more present and be in this state you know, step towards this state of relaxed readiness in the body that you can relax and yet there's still energy there. And this is what I think the Alexander technique brings in, this idea of the spine lengthening, the back broadening and widening, the shoulders releasing, the jaw releasing. So this whole head, neck, just relaxing in this joint at the back so that you can center yourself. And centering yourself allows the next letter, the O for open, <laughs> as you center, so that releases, somehow it opens your heart and your mind because you're kind of stable and grounded and that then allows you to be open. And the idea is that you can open your heart and you can open your attention so you can become more aware and awake. So you're centered and you're open, you're aware, you're awake. Then you can connect to yourself. Sometimes it helps to literally have both hands on your body, a hand, like a hand on my chest and a hand on my belly where I go, right, I can connect, I can sense my resources, I can sense myself in the present moment, connected to myself, connected to my sense of my own resourcefulness, my own resilience and confidence, my own sense of self-esteem and belonging. I can feel it. That's what being centered and open and aware just allows you to notice and connect to. And as you do that, you can connect in a sense to what the resources all around you. You know, people that you know, maybe animals, community, um, I don't know, books, music. Whatever you might say, I can connect to the things that really matter to me, really help me be resourceful and be myself and bring myself present into the world. And when I'm like this, I'm alive, I'm grounded, and I can really be with whatever's happening. I can hold and be welcoming hospitable to whatever can turn up in the moment. And I can meet that with all of me and all of my resources. So that is the idea of the coach state, that it's a process and a practice where you're coming back home to yourself through the body, through your breathing, through a kind of awareness of, of being present and alive in the moment and able to, you know, access your strengths <laughs> and um, the kind of source of yourself, of your resources. So I'm wondering if there's, I'd like to do like a little exercise. I'm wondering if anyone would like to do it with me and we'll do like a little tiny demonstration and then you can go into small groups and have a go for yourself. It's, you don't have to be an NLP person to do this. This is like an everyday kind of thing, but I am hoping that you'll find it useful. 
which is always the promise of NLP, that things will be useful, that you can use them, they're practical. You can take them with you everywhere you go. So I'm wondering who would like to do like a little kind of five minute demonstration with me. Anyone can put their hand up for this. Who would like to do that? It's just being in a coach state. That's really all it is. It's a small thing. Teresa, is that you putting your hand up? Lovely. Let's, are you okay? Yeah, let's do that. Brilliant. Julian, can you put us in that little sort of spotlighty thing? I will. So can see so. For the purposes of the video, can I ask everybody else to turn off their um, uh, cameras just for, for, the, for the duration of the... Um, of the demo. Um, now I've just lost Teresa, so here she comes. So add to spotlight. There we go. So if everybody else, Iris and uh, Lee Wei, turn your cameras off, and Christina, that would be great. Of course, really, Teresa. I just want to say, how are you? I haven't seen you for ages. How are you getting I'm, on? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. Really great. Good. It's lovely to see you. Yeah, and I, I just want to say that I remember you talking about this quite a while ago. And yeah. And at another time, I'd like to tell you just how much the timing is perfect for me. So, well, yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. So this is like a really, really simple thing, mm -hmm. which is first of all, we're going to do like this coach state. And then... After that, <laughs> I'm going to ask you for something that has slightly irritated you today. So a small scale thing, but, you know, we'll keep that in the background for now. Um, you don't have to sh share what it is, of course, it's just yours. And then we'll look at how we move back to coach state. So we'll go from a coach state to a little bit of crash and then back to coach state. And then I'll invite you to sort of say a little bit about what happened in your experience, because all of the things that we're going to do are all tested by you. They're not things that I'm saying will work. They have to actually work in some way and be helpful to you in your personal subjective experience. So um, that's what I've always liked about NLP and I love about generative change movement that all the all the models are you know try them on for yourself and find out you know how they work or how you would like to use them yourselves um it's very kind of user friendly so teresa so let's first of all just start off whatever you might now need to do just to kind of release your day a little bit relax mm. and release across the shoulders especially where we carry a lot of our tension this comes from mm. the alexander technique is in oh, the, you know just wonderful. where the head <laughs> joins onto the spine mm. and if you could just feel that mm. and just kind of like ah, oh, just release and relax and lengthen in the neck release and widen the shoulders, drop the shoulders down, mm. drop down into your center. Again, there's lots and lots of ways of doing this, everybody. You know, you, I'm sure everybody mm. here has got at least, you know, six or seven of their own ways of coming into this very grounded, quiet, relaxed re readiness, spacious mm. focusness. So just, Feel that you can breathe, Teresa. That's lovely. I can see mm. your face has softened and that's right. Just be breathing. Have the sense that you're in your center. You're connected to your gifts and your resources. Mm. Your sense of belonging in the world. Mm. Your sense of your creative uniqueness that you can just relax around, just being you, being present, being here this evening. Grateful for our bodies, our hearts beating and our dinners digesting and all of the nice things. And just kind of enjoy 
enjoy that and if you need to move you don't have to be still to do this you can but just be breathing how's that oh lovely <laughs> thank you yeah. if you were to put that if we were to put that on this scale of naught to ten what what number would you give that teresa um, for you I say about an eight because i've had some physical pain uh-huh so yeah so it's kind of yeah that's got in the way a bit okay yeah. is there anything you could do just right now that would take it even though there's been some physical pain take it to 8.1 <laughs> is there anything where that you could just kind of like Oh, I want to really get into my neck and get that good Yeah, that looked really like it was really oh, <laughs> so aware of it now. Oh, yeah, that's right. So, yeah. That's right. It's like, oh, just just yeah. work into that and loosen it off. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Well, awareness is everything. It's like half, half of it's 50% at least. Yeah. Becoming aware of what you what's happening in the yeah. present moment. Yeah. And what you might do. So yeah. even if you just do this, does that take it point one up the scale? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Lovely. I want to, I want to wiggle and stretch. Yeah, yeah, and, lovely. Because yeah. eight's very good, actually. But it's just nice to go, could you just like tiny well, yeah. take it yeah. in that direction? But that's lovely. Yeah. Okay. So mm. Teresa, step one. So this is for everyone in your group. Step one, help go into this lovely coach state. It's a kind of mental, psychophysical state of presence and aliveness and groundedness, where you really feel you're connected to the best in yourself um, in a happy and contented kind of way. Your energy may move around. It may be a quiet energy. It may be a more sort of excitatory kind of energy, but it's grounded and it feels like you and it feels like home. Mm. And that's just nice. Okay, so step two, I'm gonna ask Teresa. I'm wondering, Teresa, I'm sure there hasn't been anything that has <laughs> remotely perturbed this kind of state. Um, as Robert was saying, it wouldn't do for any of us. We don't want to be walking living saints, you know. But so, and I know that I, you know, uh, and everybody crashes many times a day. You know, we can get irritated. We've got old habits that get triggered. Something happens. We get hungry. We get, you know, irritated or annoyed or we get fearful of something. Just a little bit, not majorly, because we're just on an open evening. Yeah. There's so something maybe that took you to six or 5.5, something like that, that just knocked you a little bit off your... Yeah. sense of well-being and you don't have to tell us what it is if you don't want to I don't mind because it <laughs> might be quite entertaining but up until about oh, half maybe. an hour ago yeah there were four children in the house there's only yeah. two now and there was just something and it's we've got all, all our grandchildren and two of oh. them just arrived from Switzerland last night oh. and the kids have just been reunited this evening for yeah. the first time in months yeah lovely three-year-old twins One's eight, one's eight and one, an older lass who's yeah. 11. And it was kind of getting dinner ready and sorting it out when one of the little boy knocked water all over himself. But he uh, can't stand being wet and dirty. And he screamed. Problem yeah. was, dad was in this space trying to do a conference call for work. Yeah. Um, which is overseas, so different time zone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, he has to take all his clothes off because he hates being wet. Then the other twin took all his clothes off and they were in And I think, am I ever going to get to this? To this? Yes. And I was like, and I was like, it was funny, but yeah, I think the physical pain as well, the tension. Oh, yes. Ah, so and here we've got it. <laughs> now I've, been, know. I've got a, an issue yeah. I'm dealing with and it just doesn't take much. Yeah. Break. Um, so what, I'm going I, to just pause you there because what I want to take <laughs> out of that is this where you kind of go and what number is this and uh, we see her shoulders I flipped to about a six or a five because yeah I it's like, like a six or five coach a lot and I was actually got myself back a little bit before I came I, I see that yeah I knew you so let's see like. now let's run a little experiment 
mm -hmm. Teresa, yeah. and just see. So what we're going to do is kind of see if we can, so just release out now from your shoulders again and in your neck, mm -hmm. we know that's gonna be important. Mm -hmm. And I think in your hands, you know, and your arm muscles, you know, just yeah. feel that all of that can like, that's right, can kind Ooh. of soften a little bit and you can come back to yourself. Yeah. And I want you to sort of imagine, let's not have all of that happen again, but maybe just some of that. Yeah, I'm wondering if you can kind of make, how much you can kind of maintain your breathing and your centering. Yeah. Even though a little three-year-old has just tipped water over themselves. And to call it's just an experiment. Awesome. There's nothing wrong with what you did at all. We would all crash. But this is an experiment to go, what's it like if you deliberately, purposefully take a breath and relax around it? Mm. The little child spilt water, is drenched, it's bedtime. You're shrieking, <laughs> but you're breathing and yeah. your shoulders are relaxing and your hands are relaxing and your spine is lengthening. You can feel mm. your legs. Mm. You can feel that you're breathing, that expansion in your rib cage, just kind of like mm. naturally happening, slowing down, pausing. Mm centering, staying with you, seeing the mate, seeing and hearing the mayhem around you, <laughs> knowing that you're going to act and help, but you can stay with yourself. What's that like, Teresa, as a kind of experiment for you? What's different about it for you? Um, I can relate to that because I did I have to step back and practice it a little bit at the time yeah 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 and just, uh, oh you know it, I'm not bothered about the stuff I've just we just yeah. cuddled and tried to make him comfortable and yeah sure and, um, sure yeah. so what's different funny. as you <laughs> even go deeper into that coach state I appreciate mm. that you did do that and there were cuddles and things yeah. like that but even as you think about it now and you could tell that story again without going like this, you know, mm -hmm. without going into crash. Is that possible to kind of just mm -hmm. be breathing and go, yeah, I'm just going to be present. Yeah. I can think about what happened really mm -hmm. from a coach state. Yeah, from a coach state. It was like, isn't this beautiful? The kids just being kids and they're all here together and yeah, whatever. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And take a breath. Yeah. And I made it to this. Yeah. Meeting. And you made it here. <laughs> so what difference would you say that makes? I know you are already skillful, Teresa, with this, and you already used it. And I, I really hear that and appreciate it. But just to come back around that loop where you go, and it was like this, you know, to kind of yeah. go, oh, let's see if we can just soften some of that yeah. back down again even in memory and recall what's yeah. that like just to soften around that whole incident well remaining oh. resourceful and responsible of course yeah it's just a very uh I feel I'm sensing it's more what I can sense than I can express in words yes. and, it's a, and it's a kind of flow it's just like a yes. flow sensation or life uh, yeah <laughs> that's it's what three-year-olds do <laughs> yeah yeah it's just a flow that you know yeah. it's all okay. that's nice you're not, you're not going to be cross with me if I'm late yeah <laughs> it's all Lovely. good Lovely. and look at them all together and look how they're interacting and yeah. people comforting each other and it's just beautiful yeah yeah Lovely. Mm. thank you and, and where and where do you want and how will you be practicing this you know what's what what will you take forward from this little experiment and experience that we've done? What's the value of it to you? I think it's to expect that, prepare for it. It's almost like um, if I'm going into a coaching session, I prepare myself. Yeah. 
to be completely open and present to whoever is with me mm -hmm. and perhaps with the busyness of the day I didn't yeah. I just kind of went into the situation yeah we all arrived yeah. at one it was all chaos and yes maybe I hadn't prepared myself yeah um and you know just notice the sort of yeah. discomfort I'm already in yeah. and just prepare myself yeah. like you know what all of a sudden my house is going to be trashed and that's okay that, that's <laughs> great so it's like taking yeah. the time for yourself through the day isn't it it's like checking in with yourself all day long and releasing these, yeah. the neck and shoulders before it gets to pain and, yeah. and rigidity and remembering to stop and transition into it I do it for yeah. if, I'm, if I'm preparing for a coaching meeting where I get rid of all my stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's just everyday life. Everyday life with the grandkids. I did not do this. I yeah. did not do this this evening. I yeah. did not get yeah. into coach stage Lovely. before. And that's what I'm taking from this. Yeah, lovely. Thank you, Thank you Teresa. Thank you very <laughs> much. That was really sweet, sweet little three year old twins. Of course, they're going to be throwing water all over themselves basically um, <laughs> it's just like, how are you going to you know what's the best way of surviving this you know? <laughs> thanks julian take us back to the main um thing okay so what i'd like us to do is just it's very very simple take help each other one by one go get into this kind of coach state it stands for being centered being open being aware and awake, being connected to your own resources and coming present and welcoming whatever's happening. And if you could all turn your video cameras on again, that would be great. Oh yes, thanks, Julia. So that step one is help your partner be a little bit more in that state, whatever you need to do like I did, slow down, pause, take a breath, release, relax. And then you're going to then ask them to remember they don't actually need to tell you the content. It's probably quicker if you, they don't know the content. Just pick something, um, you know, that slightly irritated you in the day. And let's see what that's like. Teresa, I thought, was brilliant in her sort of crash state where she was going. <laughs> um, and then you're going to relax and release out of that and find out what did I do to crash? What do I do to come out of crash? And then run a little thought experiment with that thing that crashed you, but maintaining the coach state. And the person who's helping will need to, like I did with Teresa, give those reminders, you know, breathe slow down, relax, just ground, yeah, it's okay, <laughs> you know, we're just, we're just running like a little experiment, find out what you find out, what, may, what, what difference does that make to be able to even sustain an encounter with three-year-old twins who are throwing water around and screaming, <laughs> It's hard to think of something worse, obviously, <laughs> you know, and to maintain, you know, what I loved what Teresa was saying, like this sense of, yeah, it's just flow, you know, it's just flow. And actually, that's what I, I forgot I need to do that in the day, ordinary, everyday life, you know, also is going to be helped by this skillful coach state. So it's kind of five minutes each way. And um any questions about how to how to do this? I think Julian's going to help us going to breakout rooms. Okay, I am. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Great. And uh, just enjoy being with your partner. See what you get out of it. It's all fine. It's not, you can't go wrong, really. <laughs> Come back breathing, though. Come back breathing and smiling, and I know you're all right. You've... Okay, just give me a second. Thanks, Julian. Great. Thank you, Teresa. I think a lot of you have done this before, but it's such a useful thing to do. And also, I think what Teresa was saying, oh, you know, I forgot to check in on myself through the day. I think that's something that happens to all of us. So by the time I've got to tonight, I've already, I've got a pain, you know, I'm literally in pain through tension. Whereas if I can just, use this practice to keep myself relaxed through the day okay are we there 
Yeah, we are actually. Lovely. So yeah, just one group of three, but everybody else is in pairs. And um, yeah, enjoy the exercise. How long is it? Give us the... It's sort of five minutes each way. You've got about 10 minutes together. Great. And, uh, we'll let you know at the halfway point. Yeah, we will. Great. The rooms are now open. Thanks, Julian. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back. Well, yeah, welcome back. We had quite quite a few people in the group have got children to put to bed and, you know, dinner to get and things like that. So we have yeah. lost some and people who didn't necessarily want to do the exercise. But I think no, but actually here a we lot can. of people did. Everyone's shooting. Well. So just to say, I didn't know Robert Diltz was going to turn up. Those of you who never heard of Robert Diltz, he's one of the main developers in the field of NLP and the field of generative change. So it was a really lovely, he came to support us all mm. on this kind of open evening. So let me just take any comments and questions. We've got about like two or three minutes. You know, if anybody wants to uh, comment, I hope that you had an experience where you could feel what your body needs to do in order to crash <laughs> and what your body needs to do in order to get more into this kind of, you know, resourceful present coach state. Um, so uh, bringing awareness, you know, into the somatic and into the present moment. So I'm wondering if anybody's got anything. How did it go? Anybody want to report back? Did it make a difference? Did you learn something? Was it interesting? Can you use it? You can put your hand up or put the little thingy on the reaction. <laughs> well, I'm glad that Robert- Hey, hey Robert no, Hill wants to say something. <laughs> I didn't know you were still here. <laughs> he just came back. He just appeared back. Yeah. So. No, no, I, work I, for you, I came Robert. back. <laughs> oh, but, well, so as you know, the history of the coach state was that <laughs> when I came up with the acronym one morning in bed when we were indefinitely a crash state yes. <laughs> and needed to remind ourselves. But yeah. no, I, I, I think it's some. Is really a, um, I think it's the foundation. I yeah. think if you're not in a coach state, uh, yeah. nothing else works. Yeah. We like to say, and, and Stephen and I like to point out that, you know, if you're in a crash state, what you think makes no difference, what you do makes no difference. What you know, it doesn't matter what, you know, practices you've done. Uh, if you're in a crash state, nothing works. If you're in a coach state, what you think is magic, what you say is magic, what you do is magic. And so I think that's, and that's, you know, really aligns with polyvagal theory and all the other yes. things that say, you know, our state of our filters determine the reality that we perceive and that and also the, create. So uh, yeah. obviously, yeah. go ahead, Julian. Well, and also that from the coach state, from that open centered connected state, we can hold the difficult. <laughs> yeah experiences and just the witnessing and compassion from coach state is healing for those difficult yeah. Yeah. and i would say one of the things julian which is that you know because th this is about generative citizen and it's about social change the only way that we have any idea of what's happening socially or environmentally is you know through our our nervous system and our body we don't know i mean everything we know is in our body and our nervous system so when we're in a crash state the whole world is in a you know i mean our perception of the world is in a crash state so if we actually want to create a better more harmonious world mm -hmm. the only way we know it is through the the way that our body is is organized so coach state is not just a person a nice personal thing to do and even to hold or heal our own difficult feelings it is the way that we will know how to make a better world and heal the world. So, Absolutely. Yeah. It's the foundation of that. Mm. Thank you. So, so we're at the end of this, uh, you know, special open evening. I really hope that you've enjoyed um, this idea of uh, generative citizen. 
Um, we are going to be um, running a program, as we've said, um, seven sessions, two hours, you know, evening class on starting on Wednesday, the 2nd of November. And uh, Julian, I think, is putting the link to sign up uh, if you would like to uh, in the chat. Is that right, Julian? <laughs> That's it's in what the chat. Yes, it's in it's the in chat, chat now. OK. And um, obviously, I just absolutely love love to see you there and come and let's, you know, let's get together and develop our skills together. Um, become more generative citizens together and a community between ourselves to bring out the very best in each other and to be able to create, you know, sense, create the new potential world that's a place where people can thrive and people can be happy and people can be healthy and people can feel they belong and they're welcome. And uh, we can do that in all our ordinary days. And um, that's really- And this is a, a part of st beautiful. start of building this movement so that, you know, the core, this program will be the, the sort of the core essential program of the movement, but we want to get lots of people involved. And first we want to get lots of people who already got a high level of skill. That seems like such a great way to start. So that's why so many of you who are trainers and coaches and therapists, we want to, you to really get involved at the beginning because together we can really create this vibrant, powerful, powerful movement, bring lots of other people in and upskill those people. So that's really, you know, um, but I will be emailing you all tomorrow with more details of all of this. Right. And, uh, but do please get involved. And if you, and if you want, if you're an experienced trainer and want to become a trainer of uh, judging level one, um, contact us privately and we'll talk to you about that. But everyone, you can just start wherever you are. Yeah. <laughs> that's the main thing. You just start wherever you are. You know, that that's what I do all the time. I just start where I am, you know, and that's perfect. Because um, I think one of, the, one of the things that's really interesting is that some of these areas we may be very skilled at, the self-development or the communication. But maybe when it comes to, you know, uh, you know, the history of ideas, the curated history of our people, you know, sexism, racism, homophobia, all of that stuff. We may have thought about that less or read about it less. So we're all going to be at different, on each of those five scales, we're all going to be at different places. And that is totally welcome. We're, we're just on learning curves. Yeah, it's all about learning. It's all about learning. So thank you for coming this evening. Thank you to all of you. It's lovely, lovely, lovely to see you. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Julian. Thank you, everyone. I look forward, hopefully, to seeing many of you as we start the programme in November. And uh, lots and lots of love to everyone. And um, hopefully see you soon. Thank you so much, Judith. Thanks for a wonderful workshop. Really been great. Oh, thanks, Judith. Yeah. Yeah, thank thank you, you so much, Judith. Thank you, Judith. Thank you, Judith. Thank you, Judith. Yeah, great. Thank you. Bye for now.